Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. <laughs> and this is Real True Street Crime. Let me kick this with you today and tell you this. I was fucking with Big Ed at Indigo Bloom. He was charging me 15000 a key. But now I was fucking with Pablo and Crazy at the same time over on 126th and Lenox Avenue. The apartment building was on the corner of 126th and Lenox Avenue. And they would give you a key. You would open the door and go to a certain apartment and you had a key to that apartment to get in. They would give you a key to get in the building and a key to go to the apartment they wanted you to go to. And when you go to that apartment, they would come and serve you. So obviously the whole building, they had it on camera because they would know when you was in the apartment and then Pablo and Crazy, at times, Crazy was sleeping in the apartment. But let me tell y'all this so y'all understand this. Big Ed was charging me $15,000 for a key, coming back thirty. Pablo and Crazy was charging me $11,000 a key. That's what I was paying from Pablo and Crazy. I was paying $11,000 a key. I would drive back to Detroit, dump it for $20,000 or either break it down and sell it in all nickels. So I'm letting y'all know how I was coming off because I really wasn't selling weight but to one or two people. I might sell to Kevin Hill and them, but overall, I want to dump it at my spot on French Road. That was the money. So now I'm paying $11,000 a key. I'm selling the motherfuckers for 20. So if I drive to New York, and catch Pablo and Crazy and drive back and drop the Kevin Hill on them. I just made $9,000 to drive to New York. Understand that. I just made $9,000 a trip. I could drive to New York every other day. So at this point, I'm making nine, 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 nine. That's what I'm making a week. Because every time I go to New York and drop off to Kevin Hill, Harlem, and Rico, them, I was clearing $9,000 without doing anything. Just get them the package and count the money. So I'm making $9,000, and I ain't even got to run the spot. But I've still got Dennis and Kirk, them. I hook up a bag for them while I'm on the road, give it to them when I come back. French Roll would be out. And I dumped it in, hook up. So I was running a motherfucking real show. A money show. I'm paying $11,000 a key. If I fuck with Big Ed, I'm paying fifteen. dollars Understand that. So after I got robbed at Pablo and Crazy, that left me really fucking with Big Ed. Understand this. That's when I started exclusively fucking basically with Big Ed. Now, that's why I'm telling y'all, he's charging me $15,000 a key. I was already getting them cheaper than that. I was getting the bitches for eleven on 126 and Lenox Avenue, the apartment building on the corner. I'm getting them bitches for $11,000. This is why I told y'all I was a motherfucking fool to let Pablo and Crazy ever go and not listen to what the fuck they told me. Crazy is protecting me all the goddamn way. And they got the hair on, which I'm finna bust open and start getting. That shit on 126 and Lenox Avenue was a fucking platinum mine. It wasn't a fucking gold mine. It was a platinum mine. Because they giving up keys for $11,000. I ain't even get the sample and see how much the raw cost. But I seen it was a bad motherfucker. China white with black specks running in that shit when I got that sample. Understand that. That was some killer motherfucking hair round. So Pop and Crazy was running the whole show. And when I finally figure out, which I should have figured out from day one, by the way Crazy was acting. Every time he come into the apartment, he'd be in a fucking rage. What the fuck you doing here? What the fuck you want? Trying to scare a nigga off, which is what exactly he did to Courtney Brown Jr. Jr. went in that apartment building one time, said I'd never go in there again in my whole life, Eddie. And these motherfuckers giving up keys for eleven thousand dollars, a fucking gold mine. He talked about he won't go in there no more, nigga. I ain't going nowhere else but them. That's the difference. 
I ain't going nowhere but Pablo and crazy. Motherfucking coke coming back. Motherfucking 28 grams, 30 grams. Shit was 101% pure. I'm going to tell y'all this one more time. And if y'all don't believe what I'm saying, test what the fuck I'm saying. Do your homework. In the 80s, they had cocaine factories in Detroit, not in Detroit, in New York City. Let me get this right. They had cocaine factories in New York where they would have Princeton, Harvard, all the chemists from the biggest college. They had the shit on the TV when they busted it. They had all the chemists from the biggest college. Each one would go in this. They had like a factory. He'd go in there and work for three, four hours. They didn't, none of them never came in contact with each other. he go in there and make cocaine for four, five hours, six hours, his shift. The next guy come in after he's gone. They never bumped head and they never seen each other. And then they had to explain to everybody on the street why the cocaine was coming back 30 grams instead of 28. And here's the facts. Y'all can listen to anything another nigga tell y'all, but I'm telling y'all what the fuck I know because I did. And I know this. The cocaine was 101% pure. It was more than 100% pure. I'm putting 28 grams of cane in there. I ain't even fucking putting a half a gram of soda. I'm putting a fucking pinch. Now you're going to tell me I'm selling straight drop shit going down to the bottom. I ain't whipping, bro. I know how to whip if that's what I want to do. But I'm telling y'all about that 101% pure cocaine. And it was floating in the 80s. In your Harvard, Chemist, Princeton, all of your Ivy League schools was doing a shift making this shit. And this shit was going on in New York. And they had it on Nightline. So if you ever want to look it up, look on Nightline. Because the fucking story was on Nightline. So that's where I got the story from. On Nightline, Ted Koppel. Understand that? Pull it up for yourself. And you can see... Why the cocaine was so good. Oh, it's this, it's this, this. Nigga, the shit was 101% pure. And this come from a nigga who been handling cocaine from all across the country, from Colombians, from every goddamn way in the world you could get it. So I know what I'm talking about. It comes down to who's making it. And don't ever forget this. The French Connection. They also had Princeton and Harvard chemists making that shit up, man. That's why that hair rhyme and that recipe, the mom would kill you. Before they let anybody process hair rhyme and do that shit like the French Connection, they would kill you and the chemists. And that's a fucking fact, if y'all know anything. Know that when you getting it right, you getting it right. When you're getting hair around 95, 100% pure, most of you niggas ain't never even seen that. Let's even take that off the table. Because I can tell you, I have never got it out of any motherfucker's hands, but somewhere in another country. I have never got anything of that type of quality in America from no motherfucker. Pops got it from Doc Gambino. Understand that. But I didn't have a Doc Gambino. I had to go to Mexico and smuggle and swallow. It was a different route for me. We all take different routes out, but it's how bad do you really want it? And Pops used to say, how bad do you really want it? When you swallow and you want it so goddamn bad, you will die for it. Know that. A nigga swallowing want that shit so bad, he'll die for it. His wants hurt him so bad, he'll die for it. That's why he has swallowed, and he know the risk. He know he can't drink no liquor. That shit busts in him. If you know the real game and where the real money come from, don't know real money come from sitting here in America waiting on no nigga to bring you nothing. Know that. If go get it yourself. Go over to Nigeria and see the quality of the hair rhyme you would get versus the shit you're going to get here in America. Go over there to Thailand and see the quality. Hong Kong, all these places where the shit legal, man. Go over there and see the China white they got right now. And let me tell y'all one more time. This is where all the opium poppy is at. All these countries I'm naming, Mexico, Pakistan, Afghanistan. And they do not have an opioid crisis. And they got all the shit. It seems like 
when the shit ain't worth shit, because in Afghanistan it ain't worth shit. In Pakistan it ain't worth shit. So they don't have a problem. Everybody running around junkies, everybody dope fiends. They don't have that problem. It's personal choice. You all have to understand. That shit is legal in London, London, Amsterdam. It's your personal choice. And I say that once again. All that shit should be legal in America. Heroin, cocaine, all of it. I have always long been one of the people who say drugs should be illegal. It's free will. They allowing you to have free will to run in a goddamn gun store without a permit, without anything, buy a firearm, and come out here and shoot every fucking body up. So why not let you, if you want to use cocaine, heroin, or whatever it is you want to use? They keep hollering, freedom of speech, freedom of this. America has become less freedom, whether you all realize it. These Republicans are taking your rights. And y'all busy g for that shit. Abortion. If you don't want that, you ain't got to have it. But wouldn't you like the rights to have it if you wanted one? God damn. But it's awful funny. And I want to say this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get off the mic. Because it has to be said, whether you motherfuckers want to hear it or not, I'm going to say it. So if you don't want it, turn the goddamn TV off now. It's a goddamn shame. When your Supreme Court justices, Clarence Thomas, a fucking billionaire donor has bought his house his mother's house, and pay for his kid's education. But you all can't have a $10,000 payment free. Y'all can't have $20,000 worth of free education. But his kid's getting it from a billionaire. So he ain't got to worry about how to pay for that loan because he didn't take that because he got it from a billionaire donor. And that's a disgrace for our Supreme Court to be killing affirmative action, killing gay rights, taking all of our rights. And I'm going to say this one more goddamn time. Joe Biden, you need to pack the court because the fucking Republicans is out of order. The courts need to be packed. Joe Biden, the courts need to be packed because they're ruining the fiber of America. And you know that yourself, Joe Biden. The courts need to be packed because they are ruining the fiber of America. They are ruining a place of freedom. They want to tell you this the land of the free and the home of the brave. But the only thing you can do is buy a motherfucking gun. That's it. You can go fight a fucking war at 18, but you can't have a drink. You can go die at 18, but you can't have a drink. This is insanity. And as long as y'all let this bullshit go on, these Republicans is put down, it's going to keep going on. And I don't want to hear that bullshit. Oh, the Democrats, the Democrats, the Democrats tell you what they standing for. Let's do gun reform. And so you all you motherfuckers who screaming that whole shit, because that's what it is. When it comes to gun reform, do your motherfucking homework. The NRA gives all of the money to the Republican Party because they sanction all this killing on the streets. Know that. And the unions give the money to the Democrats. Those are your fucking facts. Know them before you go spouting out shit out your mouth that's totally incorrect. Joe Biden is calling for a ban on assault weapons. Ron DeSantos say he won't everybody in America to be armed whether they are blind, crippled, or crazy. And you tell me how much goddamn sense that make. So count up the deaths, all these goddamn deaths in Baltimore, Chicago, all over the goddamn country is disgraceful. And these Republican lawmakers, Allah gonna get to y'all. Thank you bigger than Allah. Because he coming for you rotten ass motherfucking Republicans. And as I said before, and I'm going to say it a motherfucking again. You Republican, do not believe in God until you're about to die. Then all of a sudden, you believe in God. Now you think you finna buy God by giving all your wealth away, which you should have been giving and paying taxes all the motherfucking time. And God know that. So all that whole shit y'all putting down, running up in outer space, ain't paying no taxes, and think we gonna cheer that shit? I wouldn't give a fuck if y'all never went up in 
out of space. Because I ain't cheering that shit. Pay some motherfucking taxes. And help fix some of these motherfucking roads. And fix some of these motherfucking schools. And then I'll cheer you going up to space. But what the fuck I'm cheering tax dodging space air aliens for? All these space aliens is tax dodgers. All of them. None of them pay taxes. But they want us to cheer them going to outer space. What the fuck does that do for you and you hungry today? What does it do for you to see Virgin Galactic go in the age of outer space for 30 seconds and you hungry than a motherfucker? Corona killing everybody. And you worrying about a motherfucker going to the moon? Are you serious? You just wasting money and fucking over the poor people. And that's where the government is fucked up at. Because they're not taxing the wealthy. And they're allowing them just to run wild and do any motherfucking thing. And it's a fucking disgrace. And I'm going to say it again. It's a goddamn disgrace. Your Supreme Court is a fucking disgrace. Clarence Thomas taking a house from a billionaire donor. He even bought his mama a house. He paid for his kids' education. So what is Clarence Thomas working for? Really? And he thinks black folks is supposed to accept that. Nigga, you a traitor, you a sellout, and your granddaddy told you that. And when he gets your ass after into the next life, motherfucker, don't think ain't nothing after this, nigga. Because it's coming for your rat ass, selling out your own race for a fat ass white woman. Wow.